Hello and welcome to Wednesday. It is Wednesday's edition of Art Time with Ego Rabbit. I am Jesse W. Craig, aka Ego Rabbit, founder and creator of Charisma Kill Studios and the various comics and projects that halfway made it, never made it, or will soon to be make it. Which you can all find at Charisma Kills. Dot com, our website. Speaking of website, I found the designs for the original Charisma Kills webpage. Seriously considering going to that because I like the way that was. Anyway, we are back. And I've got a very special image I want to do today. Um, one of my favorite, I think I talked about it in the first stream. And it is going to appear right here, right there. There it is. I misplaced that image for many, many years and recently have found it. I, I've tried to recreate it, but I never could capture it. So now that I have it, I'm going to give it the digital treatment. I'm going to ink it uh, digitally and then color it. So this is probably going to be, it will be a multi-episode project. So hopefully i can squeeze it into three maybe two who knows but here we go let's go ahead and jump into this because i'm anxious to get this one started well i guess i could have put a little charge on the pin today but all right let's let's just jump into it here we go to the art board bling let me move the mouse out of the way okay so here we go. Um, I called this image. It was called In Rim Sleep. No one can hear you scream. Did it? It doesn't have a date on it for some reason, but it was a long time ago, probably 2012 or 2013. And if you know the story of Sweet Dreams Are Made of Worms, which there's not a lot of that is public. Uh, Ego, our protagonist, he has problems with his sleep and his dreams. So let's, I'm going to, let's see, give it two fingers on the layer. And yeah, I know, oh, it's the wrong one. But bang. All right, adjust the opacity. And I'm not going to, like always, I'm not going to try to redo it to its former glory. I'm going to try to update it just a little bit. So here we go. So in this image. <clears throat> so look, I guess I should start by going. Hmm. Let's go and hit and get Ego in here. All right. So Ego, our protagonist, he is a rabbit. But he doesn't know why he's a rabbit. He has amnesia. He woke up one day in the hospital. Not knowing how he got there or why he was there. He was beat to hell and back. Bloody. And unaware of why he was there. Well, you know what amnesia is. I don't have to describe it to you, right? Alright, so again, as you can see, I'm not following the exact original. I'm going to bring it up to date a little bit with the way that... Kind of with the way I draw ego now. So that's sort of the story of Sweet Dreams is that Ego is trying to find out who he is, why he is, and why the hell he's an anthropomorphic rabbit. Because wouldn't we all like to know?
<laughs> hey, Diamond, how's it going? Actually, you know, this image was actually kind of inspired by a, a nightmare that I had. I won't go too in detail with it because, well, that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here for psychiatric evaluation. Anyway. Basically, I had this dream and the world was going to hell. Because it seems it really real. And then all of a sudden things just started going wrong. And I realized, I realized, I basically became lucid in a dream. I realized that I was dreaming. And, which is not uncommon for me. But, the problem was, is I couldn't wake up. I couldn't wake up and I had all these things chasing me and coming to get me. And I knew that it wasn't real. And so in my sleep, I, I dropped down to the ground like in the middle of the road. And I was screaming to my wife. I was, wake me up! Wake me up! I don't know if I was screaming it in real life, but I was screaming it in my dream, and I was not getting woken up, so. Eventually, I did wake up. I will never forget that. That was a wild dream. Uh-oh, what the hell just happened? There we go. Okay, my screen went blank. All right, I may change Ego's jacket up a little bit. But I don't know. Because I do a different jacket on him now. But we'll see. If you have seen any of my artwork for Weird. The role playing game I'm working on. Uh, there's a character. Uh, named Horror Show. And he has a jacket very similar to this. So yes, every time Ego goes to sleep or falls unconscious, in case you didn't know, for those of you who didn't know, um, he goes into his own head, or supposedly his own, he goes into a place that's called Psyche, where it's a, it's a, it's a place that kind of mirrors or mimics the, the world that he lives in, the waking world, except it's overrun by zombies. Don't worry, it's not a zombie story. It is not a zombie story. The zombies just represent... Um, frustrations and things like that that he has in the waking world. But anyway... And come back and redo this. So he's wearing a jacket and he's got a hoodie. Because at this time in Big City, where he goes from, it is cold. Well, I said I wasn't going to do exactly how it was, but I am ending up doing it exactly how it was. That's all right. I really like the teeth, the zombie teeth on this one. This might, I was probably going to make this into the cover of a comic. Oh, yes, I know. It was either issue three or two, maybe two. All right. I don't know if I've ever talked about this key. He has this key. It was, he had it when he woke up in the hospital. Oh, and I guess I can see why his name is Ego, too. 
uh, when he was found. He was found in the river by some fishermen. He was all beat up and... He had a shirt on that said Ego. And the only other thing, he, well, it depends on how I'm telling the story. Uh, but originally, the only thing he had on him was the shirt and the pants, and he had the key. But there's a new script where I'm writing. And in it, he doesn't automatically have the key. The key comes to him in the hospital because he wakes up and he's ripping the roof. He's ripping the, uh, what do you call it? The ventilator out of his throat. And when he does, he pukes. And when he pukes, oops, he pukes up the key. Now, it's always a little tricky. It shouldn't be what it is, but it's always a little tricky doing um, color versions of my black and white art. I don't know why. It just is. Let me redo that. Because the jacket that he's wearing in the beginning of the story, of course, if you haven't read it, but if the jacket he's wearing in the beginning of the story gets destroyed, um, I guess, spoiler alert. I don't like that. Don't like it. I know it's looking sloppy, but don't worry. I will fix it as I go. So what's that about your uh, <laughs> diamond? Your wife would disagree with that statement. Somebody in the house can hear people screaming at night. Okay, all right, I'm going to do another layer for, matter of fact, let's just name the layers. Boom, boom, rename. Uh, let's call this one Ego. All right, and now let's call this one The Mouth. <laughs> if you screamed in the middle of the night, you would get whacked. Not so much anymore, but I think, especially back a long time ago, my wife was probably used to me flying up out of the bed and screaming and swinging at things.
All right. Oh, no, I got to name this one. Sorry. Um, This one's going to be the mount. <laughs> All right. On to the mount. All right. I love drawing. I love drawing zombie teeth. I have no idea why. Let me kick it up a notch here. Bink. The brush size, that is. I love drawing zombie teeth. God, I live for it. I don't know. I just, I just like to make them all like nasty and gnarly and all cracked and chipped and blah, blah, blah. blah. I'll come back and put the goo and stuff on them after I get the, the teeth in there. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, man, that zombie has all of its teeth. Yes, it does. This, if you've ever seen Return of the Living Dead, Return, yeah, Return of the Living Dead. There are zombies out there. I mean, uh, there are cadavers out there with perfect teeth. Actually, speaking of, I, I don't know. I thought about, you know, people used to anyway do these watch parties. I thought about doing a watch party for Return of the Living Dead. Re yeah, Return of the Living Dead. It's one of my favorite zombie movies, and it's it's pretty much the first one of its kind where, like, the zombies talk and call for brains. I'm fairly certain it's the first one where they, the zombies specifically eat brains. Brains. You know, they catch one of them in the in the chapel and they pull it through the window and they ask it why does it eat brains and. Uh, it's, to kill the pain. The pain of being dead. The gods must be crazy. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, I've seen that. As a matter of fact, I've thought about watching it again a couple times. Because I've seen it. Um, I've seen it available for streaming a few places lately. Alright, let's go ahead and put the, let's put the juice and stuff in. You know, the goo. And all that stuff in the zombie teeth. Because you know. Zombie teeth has got goo and stuff. Look at that. Oh. oh, it's so nasty. Oh, that's right. There's a roach there crawling on it. Little cavity creeps. I can get lost in this. I could. So I better not. Let me go ahead and race Ego's ear there. Where it's in the way. Wait, what is this? Oh, I was on the wrong layer. Here we go. <clears throat> yeah, I've been watching a lot of old stuff here lately. It's getting close to Halloween, so I've been digging through some old stuff. What I watched today, I was drawing. Look, at, I was working all day today. In the studio, I was drawing from pretty much nine o'clock in the morning up, well, hell, up until now. 
took a bit of a break to go get some dinner but um i guess one of the coolest things i watched was alice sweet alice i think that it's 1960s it was very classic horror movie ish matter of fact that's sort of why i'm late yeah i didn't get anything else done today i just sat and Set and Drew. I had to practice because I'm probably one of the only holdups on the weird book now is the art. And <clears throat> there's a lot of a uh, lot of art to be done and I'm out of practice. So mainly it was just doing a lot of uh, what do you call them? Just a lot of a lot of studies, like on uh, I did a bunch of uh, studies of people sitting in different positions and chairs, then. Uh, And then swinging an axe. I thought, you know what? I've, I don't think I've ever drawn anyone swinging an axe before. And I kind of need that. So I typed in swinging an axe in Google. <laughs> Looked at all the images for reference. So now I'm fairly comfortable with drawing people swinging axes. Still need to work on the hand just a little bit. The hand holding positions for X swinging. But. I think I got it. Alright, look at these gnarly zombie teeth. Now, I'm going to add some stuff to it that's not in the original, I think. I, you know, I actually thought of making a print of this or putting it on a shirt, maybe. I don't know if anyone would buy it, but they get make a cool shirt. Of course, people, if you wore it, people would always stop you and go, what the hell is that? Well, that's the point, right? And then you could say, hey, you don't know this. You don't know this. You don't know who this is. And then you explain. And you send them to grismakills.com. See? That's how that works. That's how go to walking billboard. Whoopsie. Put some more roaches here. Not necessarily roaches. I think when I was originally drawing it, I was like, I'm sure, Diamond, you may remember the, the old AIM commercials and with the cavity creeps. I actually did a freaking comic. I think Marvel Comics did a comic for AIM. And they were fighting cavity creeps. And they were doing it like real serious. But anyway, as when I was originally drawing this, I was thinking of cavity creeps. Like, what, what, what would a cavity creep look like? And then, I don't know, it just, it broke out into just, they look like, they kind of look like roaches, just climbing around there on the old teeth. Some of these lines may get erased for color instead of texture. So, but I'm, I'm cool with that. Did I mention that I love drawing zombie teeth? I mean, that could go on a resume, right? Um, 
what is uh what is your artistic speciality <clears throat> well i'm a cartoonist and uh i i i i i love drawing zombie teeth damn it man you're hired start today that would be awesome So if anyone out there needs some zombie teeth drawn, I'm your man. Hey RB plays, how's it going, RB? We're drawing uh we're drawing We're drawing Ego. Who is in REM sleep. Can't wake up and is being devoured by a huge disembodied Zombie mouth. Because I love drawing zombie teeth. Did I mention that? I swear, yeah, Marvel. I, I'm pretty sure it was Marvel. I have to double check, but I'm pretty sure it was Marvel. They had a comic. It might have ran several issues, too. Um, About... I think it was AIM. It was the team. The team was AIM. And uh, they were fighting. I, I never read the damn thing. So I couldn't tell you exactly what it was. But they. Damn it. They were fighting cavity creeps. But I tell you what. It was probably a better comic than some of that shit they're putting out now. These days I'd probably be glad as hell to read a fucking cavity creep comic. And some of that garbage they're putting out today. Ugh. I'll be honest with you. I don't even collect comics anymore. I gave up like last year or so. Um, I just I had enough. I couldn't stand it. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what they do with writers anymore. I guess like do they. Do they have requirements for writers now? It's like do you have to have some kind of formal experience or education to write a comic now or do you just get hired off the street i mean it's like i don't know now i do re i did well i'm gonna say this and i'm gonna give a little explanation but yes i do still read comics um but i don't read mainstream comics anymore because they're just pretty much worthless um, I have been reading until my local comic book store closed. Damn it to hell! I have been reading Usagi Ojimbo, which I've said before, my favorite samurai rabbit. But my local comic book store closed. So I am way behind on Usagi. Way behind. Alright, getting those teeth in there. Again, I originally drew this picture probably 2012, 2013. Alright, look at him. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, you know, not just graphic novels. I'm talking writing in general. I've, it's just going. Oh, it's going. It's going terrible, man. It's going. Uh, I don't. I, I. It's like comics, movies, television. It's it's like uh, it's full. It's full of plot holes. The stories are full of plot holes. They're. Full of internal inconsistencies. Uh, they they don't seem to give a damn about things that came before it. Um, uh, just just terrible writing, terrible dialogue, uh, horrible narrative translation uh, transitions, and all that. You know, poor. Uh, character development things like it's just 
it's terrible. It's, it's horrible. I, I don't want to knock fan fiction because there's some good fan fiction, but it seems like people are going and and uh, they're hiring fan fiction writers to write now, and it's like it's just well, ugh. Terrible, terrible stuff, terrible. You know, I used to not say that kind of stuff either. I used, you know, I used to be like, hey, I know how hard this stuff is. So kudos to anyone who out there who's trying, you know. But now I'm like, my God. I think I would put some of my stuff up against some of that stuff. Yeah, I, I miss practical effects too. I know I probably sound like an old dude, but... I'll tell you what, I watched Conan and Conan the Barbarian and Conan the Destroyer the other day. And I was like... There, oh, on Conan the Destroyer, there was a, there was some crap, a little bit of crap special effects that didn't age well. But for the most part, the special effects were awesome. The giant snakes were the giant snakes were really were believable. You know, and I'm watching on the HD TV, so um, it holds up to HD. Alright, here is the part where I'm going to get lost in this picture, so. I got so much going on on the inside. Uh, somewhere in here is the tongue. I think this is it. All right. Got goo and stuff hanging. Oh, look at the goo. Oh, yummy. It's got goo. I wonder if I should do goo on another layer. Yeah, let's do goo layer. Rename. To... Go. Go. All right. I know I've got some goo already. Hey now. All right, here we go. All right, let's. This is kind of what I was talking about earlier about black and white and color. Black and white get away with a lot more, I think, because because ink you can get lost in the ink and the little visual textures and stuff. But then when you add color, you can see. Or some of those textures and stuff. Oh, we're going to use... Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You know, and I wonder... I wonder, is it really cheaper to do visual effects? To do... Sci to do... Computer graphics? As opposed to... Um, using regular now, I, you know, I can understand probably like Jurassic Park. <clears throat> I 
I mean, I, I don't think Jurassic Park could have been pulled off the way they are originally going to do it with uh, puppets in stop motion. I just don't think that would have worked. Come on, screen. Come on. Okay. All right. So where else do we need some goo? Here we go. Goo. Oh, that's right. The Orville. The or I don't know if you've seen that, but the Orville is better Star Wars than Star Trek. Better Star Trek and Star Wars than Star Wars is current Star Wars and Star Trek. Ah, uh, they were sitting there watching that. You know, today I watch current Star Wars or current uh, Star Trek, and I just I, I'm like, man, what the fuck? What's what's going on here? Then I watched the Orville, and I realized that this parody of science fiction. This parody of science fiction is better in every way than our flagship sci-fi series. Come on. Something's wrong with the screen. It's kind of like locking up on me or something. Oh, there's more goo. I forgot, but let me go ahead and get the lips in here, and then I'll go back and goo up those lips. Uh, gooey lips. Let's get these lips. Zombie gooey lips. JJ Amers, yep. I don't know if you can blame it all on JJ. Because, man, the Star Trek they got going on right now. Can't blame JJ for that one. And I'm not so much talking about Strange New Worlds because. I kind of okay with Strange New Worlds. It does have problems, but I guess it's tolerable. But like Star Trek Picard, I just had to quit watching that, man. I was like, they lost me when they had the space pimp. Motherfucker, you got pimps, you got space pimps in Star Trek. And they dress like pimps from the 80s. Lime green feather freaking hat. Sorry, I'm banging the table. Goddamn. Space pimps. In Star Trek. God damn. Pardon my language. Fucking space pimps, man. You know, that's some shit that should be on Ice Pirates. Remember the movie Ice Pirates? They had space herpes. They used to have space pimps. Not Star Trek. Yeah, he is easy to blame. I don't really want... I'm not really going to defend J.J. or argue for or against him I guess because I don't know I, I just uh... I, I don't know how far I made it diamond I just I, it might have been season two and I was just like I it was just so silly and so and I guess, you know, another thing that I haven't complained about modern Star Trek is, uh, I don't know how to word it, but they're not, they don't act like Starfleet officers anymore. They, uh, all, you know, the majority of them are insubordinate. 
um, they don't take the job serious at all. They're all the super best that they possibly, anyone could possibly be. Um, very argumentative with, you know, authority and stuff. It's just, it's not how I remember Star Trek. I remember Star Trek, like, they could be in a crisis situation. And they're cold, and they're cool, and they're collective. And they're getting the job done, you know. They're not talking shit to each other. They're not talking back. They're following orders. Um, they're acting professional. They're acting like Starfleet officers. All right, let's go back to goo. Go back to goo layer because I see some goo. Yeah, yeah, Barbie. We've been talking about been sort of thinking about that too, man. You know, I, I just, I don't even know, like, honestly, I would cancel Disney Plus and, and Paramount, but we get Disney Plus, no, we get Hulu with Disney Plus and we get, we get HBO Max because of, uh, we get that free because of, uh, our internet provider, but, Oh, shit, I'm drawing on goo again. Crap. It's going to be one of those pitches. And honestly, you know what I watched the most? I watched the free stuff. Like, um, we got the Roku. I got a Roku TV here in the studio. And uh, I just like to have it on while I'm drawing, working. And, you know, we got like, Tubi, Pluto, Zumo. Uh, all all those free channels, right? Yeah, you gotta watch some commercials. But guess what? Your ass is gonna be watching commercials now with Netflix and Hulu and all that. I was watching Hulu the other day. Me and my son was introducing him. I was introducing my son to uh, Big Trouble in Little China for the first time. And sure as shit, Hulu, which we pay for, had a damn commercial in it. God, am I talking like one of those internet people that just bitches and moans? Constantly. No, Hulu has not always had commercials, and I've noticed that if I watch Hulu here on in the studio... On the Roku TV, there's little to no commercials. But if I'm watching Hulu on the kitchen television, which I get through the Nintendo Switch, there's a ton of commercials. I don't know how that works. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I'm not, and I don't really care for hardly anything on uh, Disney Plus now. I don't watch any of the Marvel shows anymore. I mean, they lost me. Crap. Crap shows. Crap writing. And not to mention that I'm just I'm freaking Marvel out, man. <laughs> I'm done, yo. I'm done. I'm kind of done. All right, let's get these cavity creeps going on these lips. All right, let's see here. I may eventually switch over to a smaller line weight. Come on. I think my, I think I just need a new iPad. I think my screen 
is losing its sensitivity. This iPad has served me for many, many, many years. One division was entertaining for sure. Hawkeye, mm. Hawkeye was more entertaining than Moon Knight. I haven't even watched Miss Marvel yet. I just, I don't know. It just doesn't interest me. Um, I don't have a problem with Miss Marvel, but. I've got plenty of comics with Miss Marvel in it. Uh, as soon as I found I found out that it was going to be geared towards teenagers, which I do not have a problem with because it is Miss Marvel. And that her powers were changed. Apparently she's a genie now. I was just like, you know what? Why am I going to put myself through that? Why, why am I going to put myself in that situation where I'm going to be watching the show... And the whole time I'm going to be going, God, why? Why did they do this? Why is this this way? Nope. Nope. I'm not going to do it. Maybe one day when I've got nothing to do, I might check it out. I don't know. But. I tell you what, if one of y'all watches Miss Marvel all the way through. For me. Tell me if it's worth it or not. Maybe I'll watch it. RB, how much you? You want to volunteer for that one? Catch Miss... Catch... Watch Miss Marvel for us. Let us know. We finished up Stranger Things. It was entertaining. You know, there's some questions there, but. It's entertaining. Alright, let's get some nastiness on these lips. We need to get, like, nasty lips. Like, festered, infested, fettered uh, pustules on the lips. Maybe some, maybe some dry cracking. Festered lips. Is festered a word? Can we say festered? If not, can I invent that and claim it? Can I claim it? Infestered. Inflamed. Postulals. All right. Get some more. <coughs> A lot of these. Oh man, I'm drawing on glue. I'm drawing goo on the wrong layer. I need to be on goo layer. Yeah, only Murders in the Building is good, too. It's not a Marvel movie. It's not like a show. Alright, so a lot of this goo that I'm drawing might get erased. Because I might just use color. Instead of lines for it. Fustulated. Fustulated. Yeah. 
in flush shield. Yeah, I guess I could give like an update on weird since we have some actual viewers here. Um, well, let me go back to the figure ego. <clears throat> we'll color in some of these things on ego. Um, so of course we finished the the current round of play, play test. There's going to be at least one more with. RB and what is the salty dogs? Is that what your name's Drizel? The salty dogs. And sorry, I'm not blanking. I'm just trying to concentrate on this real fast. Um. Shit, speak, Jesse, speak. Um, and then I think I may have enough games after the one with the salty dogs. I may have enough games. And then from that point on, instead of doing modules, I might just do custom adventures, like customized for the players, for the player characters. Also have another setting for weird that's not okay, but maybe I can do some play tests in that setting. It's called Three Pauls. Three Pauls, New Mexico, and it's more for more for like the UFO sci fi horror. If anyone would be interested in that. Mm. I do this all the time. I try to put too much detail in. And then it's like, you know, this the final image is going to be like maybe eight and a half by 11. All these little details you will not see. Yes to the sci-fi horror. RB. We would need to make new characters for that one though. I don't guess we'd have to, but it'd be best if you started off with a fresh character. Because it's, it's sort of designed for starting characters. <clears throat> and then, of course, they build up. There you go. Oh, and also in this one, you don't automatically start off knowing each other. I usually hate that in role-playing games because it makes it extraordinarily difficult to get started. But this one was designed specifically for a bunch of strangers. To get together. We played it once, but we never actually finished it. 
But three paws is pretty cool. All right. Let's get some of these darker things going on. And then let's see what time is it. Oh, we're running out of time. So let's fill some of this in. Ego always has this shadowy thing underneath his, on his forehead there. All right, get some text. Let me drop that. Let's get some textures going on here on the face. All right. Oh, I forgot his little squigglies on the side of his head. He's got squigglies. All right, get these textures going. These darks. Ah. Uh, I don't want to put a lot of cross hashing. All right, Diamond, we'll catch you later. I'm about to be logging out of here, too. Uh, it, was, uh, it was good talking to you again. Can't wait to play with you again in a game or two. Should be going back to uh, what, the Welcome Home game pretty soon, I think. Oh, but you're not in that one. That's right. That's right. <sighs> yep. Let's see what kind of trouble. Veil of Shadows can get us into and if Admiral matches can pull them out. If I'm not mistaken, we gotta like fight a war, right? We got a bunch of spell jammer ships now. All right. Let's call it there. There we go. Let's call it right there because our hour is up. Um, I would go more, but eh, what the hell? Save a little bit for later, right? I'm trying like hell to stick to the Monday, Wednesday streaming schedule. So I was really happy when I found this old picture because I really was thinking about it about redoing it digitally um so another thing i thought about was redoing my first printed comic uh kenshin 1281 redoing that digitally um i've got all the original scans of that page and maybe color it too like some digital watercolor but oh well i don't want to make too many plans ahead of time so yes if you're just now joining us, sorry, we're going, we're leaving now. Um, you can find edited versions of these streams at our YouTube channel, which is Charisma Kills TV. Um, you can also find out more information about Charisma Kills at charismakills.com. That is our webpage, which will be changing soon, uh, hopefully sooner than later. I just got so much work is piled up on me. That I've got to get done. Who knows what I'll get to. Um, as far as games and test plays. Uh, as far as Weird. And Charisma Kill Studios games. Which is currently the only one that is being test played. We have sort of partnered up with the. <clears throat> not the. But United Adventure Company. And so you can catch. Me running Weird. Or playing in the games. As well as hey RB there plays. And diamond diamond he was just here he plays uh we all play you can see us acting fools and a lot of times a lot of times the games just boil down to hey who can have their character die or go crazy first fuck a plot fuck a storyline let's do this so anyway yeah you can see those on united adventure company on youtube uh so they're pretty fun 
some great folks on there. Um, I think that's everything. No long goodbyes. Let me get this glove off. Why my hand is sweaty? Why do I wear the glove? Well, because the I, ugh. the ugh. It, it it ugh. It gets it gets skin juice on the screen of the iPad as I'm trying to draw. And I don't, you know skin juice. Blah, 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 blah. <sighs> okay, well, uh, no long goodbyes. Let's just call it. Good night, and we will see you later. Monday, as a matter of fact. Monday. So. What? Yep. You guys in the studio booth? Yes. Take us to the intro screen, please. Got it? Okay. <laughs> I don't really have an intro screen booth, people. No, I don't have people. Sorry. That's your, uh. That's your end credit scene for this episode.